this video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question reverse linked list. This question is great because many of the linked list concepts that you learn in this video will apply down the road to other linked list questions. Let's jump right into it. So first things first, in this example and in leak codes example, you are going to be given a linked list that looks something like this. And what LeetCode wants you to do is they want you to reverse it. So in our example, we have one, two, three, four, five. And in this example, we have five, four, three, two, one. LeetCode wants you to reverse it. Pretty simple. But the real question is, how exactly do we do that? There's many ways that we could do that, but this is the simplest, it's the it's the least mentally taxing, and it's also very time and space efficient. All that we're gonna do is we're going to take these arrows, these references, these linked lists are just nodes that are chained together with references, with arrows, and we're gonna reverse them so that this arrow now points to the previous node. And we're just gonna go down the linked list, iterate, and turn this little arrow around. Now, there's a couple of you out there that are probably smart asses. So you're going to say, well, that linked list doesn't look like that linked list. Visually, humanly, you would be correct. When we look at this with our human eyes, that is absolutely true. This linked list is different from this linked list. But the thing is, the computer can't tell the difference. Because when we, when we reverse it, we're going to assign a new head. And when the computer iterates through it, it will be identical. It will now be five, four, three, two, one. And this linked list is the exact same, five, four, three, two, one. But the thing is, is that there's a couple more steps. It seems pretty easy on the surface and it's not really that difficult, but there's a couple more steps that we have to worry about in order to actually make this thing happen. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take a null and we're going to assign it to the previous element of number one. We're going to take this null, we're going to place it right in front of the number one. And the reason that we're going to do this is because you must have a null at the end of your linked list. You may be asking yourself, well, that's not the end of the linked list. It's not the end of the linked list now, but it's going to be the end of the linked list once we get done. Next thing that we're gonna do, just like every other linked list problem in existence, in existence, we're going to go ahead and we're going to assign the head. This is pretty much a pointer. The head is pretty much a pointer that signifies where we are going to start iterating and also where we are at in memory. It's very similar to a for loop. After that, this is where things are unique to reversing a linked list. We have to store the next place in memory. We have to store this node right here. And the reason that we have to store this is because once we delete this reference, this arrow, and we point it to the previous element, it severs the connection. There's not going to be, if we don't store the next value, there's not going to be a way for us to iterate to the next value. That's the reason that we need to store the next value in memory. So next thing, we're going to go ahead, assign the pointer to the next node. We're going to move over our temporary node and we're going to repeat this process over and over. And that is pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and keep moving down, keep storing the next pointer, moving over the, moving over the reference and reversing the arrow, so to speak, of every single element till we finally get to the end. And that is pretty much it. I'm not going to finish it because you guys kind of get the picture. Let's go ahead, let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's code it up. So I'm inside of IntelliJ right now. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to go in the folder where the main file is at and I'm going to create a list node. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but it is very educational in case you don't know a lot about linked list. You can see kind of like the inside details about how linked list actually work. And AI does most of it for you. So we're just gonna create an empty constructor. We're also going to uh, have a constructor that takes in this.val. We'll set this, uh, that to this.val. And we'll also have a constructor that's going to take in the val and the node. And once again, AI is gonna pretty much do everything for you. And we can finally move on to the actual solution. So next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a brand new Java class. I'm gonna call this solution. 
And within here, going to go ahead and start typing out the actual method. We are going to return the list node that we actually just created, and we're going to call this reverse list, and this is going to take in a list node of head. You may be wondering, wondering to yourself, why are we returning a list node? Wouldn't we actually return the linked list? Well, we're actually returning the head of the linked list, which is a list node. And we're also, in order to actually reverse it, we're going to take in the list node of the head that we are trying to reverse. So that explains a lot of the method signature. So next thing, we're going to need to declare null. And we need the null, remember, because we need a null at the end of our linked list. And we're also going to have a list node. This is going to be our pointer. You could call this cur. Sometimes people call it cur. You could call it uh, current. I'm just going to call it current. And I'm going to set the current node that we are at to the head. So in order to get through the linked list, we're actually going to have to iterate. We're going to set this to end once we get to the end of the length list, which is going to be null. And remember, that's the reason that I said we have to have null at the end of the length list. If we don't have null at the end of the length list, this would probably not work. All right, so here is the actual algorithm. So first things first, just like we talked about on the whiteboard, we need to set the next uh, node. We need to store the next node so that when we actually break the reference, we can still get to the next node and set it to reverse. This is going to be the actual part that reverses it. And then this is what's going to move our pointers up. And this is going to be what moves our current uh, pointer, our current node to the next node. That's pretty much it. That's the end of the reverse length list. So let's go ahead. All that we need to do now is test it to make sure it works. So I'm gonna go ahead copy all this down. I'm going to minimize my window because I'm in full screen right now. And let's go ahead, hop over into leak code real quick. So we're over here, what we want to do is we want to go ahead, paste that in there, make it look a little bit better. Let's go ahead and run it. Make sure our tests are running okay. Everything's accepted. Let's go ahead, hit the submit, make sure our uh, runtime complexity is good. So our time complexity is N and our memory complexity is constant we have passed the interview guys congratulations anyways hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to smash that like button smash that subscribe button as always thank you for watching